Putin has made it very clear that they are trying to move away from the US dollar and attempting to diversify their holdings. He is very upfront and frank about Russia's decision to try and wean off of the world's reserve currency. He also mentions that the US is actually destroying their currency in the process. It seems like the battle continues. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today, I'm going to dig deeper into the issue of Russia selling off their U.S. debt. I have covered this recently in a couple videos, and I wanted to clarify a few points as well as show you the information directly from Putin himself. This is not a quote. This is a video of him talking, and I will show you a little bit of that. I'm going to show you some high-level individuals talking about this as well, but First, I want to start with this article out of CNBC. Treasury data shows Russian holdings of U.S. debt plunged 84% since March, but here's what it really means. So they're a little bit late because I already covered this previous to this article coming out, but I wanted to show this to you. Number one, because they quote the actual Treasury, which I will show you in a moment, but I was accused in a previous video that I made up the chart that I showed. Then in the next video, I gave you the actual treasury holdings. And then individual said, this doesn't tell us anything and so on. Don't worry about that. Let's just get into the real deal, okay? Russian holdings of treasury securities declined 84% between March and May, falling to 14.9 billion from 96 billion in just two months. Russia's sell-off of U.S. debt in May occurred around the same time the benchmark 10-year Treasury note yield rose to its highest level since 2011. All right. Now, there's more details in the article, but I'm covering that to show you, number one, that they're late on this article. Number two, the fact that this is actually happening, okay? I didn't make it up, I promise, okay? Now, here we have this directly from the treasury.gov website. You can see it for yourself, all right? I didn't make up this chart. It's real, okay? Now, I was also accused of suggesting to everybody that this was $14 million and not $14 billion. You can see that it says millions of dollars at the top, but for those individuals who don't understand how this works, it is at the bottom of this list, Russia, right here, 14.9, but that's millions of dollars. 14,900 millions of dollars is 14.9 billion dollars. Okay, let's just get that out there because a lot of individuals for some reason in the other video just didn't quite get that, okay? So we've decided right here that this is factual, that they did in fact reduce their portfolio of U.S. debt 84% in a span of two months. You can see that and confirm it for yourself. The other issue I had from the previous videos was that everybody was asking, who are they selling to? Who are they selling to? Who are they selling to? You need to do your own due diligence here. I did show on the last one. I don't think people stayed until the end, but what can you do? What you need to look at is the U.S. Treasury holdings for yourself. You can go in here. You can see where they are today. You can see where they are the previous month and the previous month and look Look to see who's been buying, who's been selling, okay? If you don't want to wait to the end of the videos, then you have to look into it on your own. I just don't know what to tell you about that. So now we're going to get into the actual video itself. I can't show you the video because then it would be uh, copyright issues and, so, and such, but I'm just going to talk about what he said, and I highly recommend it will be in the sources at the very bottom where you can link over to it or just... Uh, type in what you see here. Putin, U.S. is making a huge mistake for using the dollar as a political tool against Russia. That right there will get you to the video. But essentially what we have here is Putin. He's being asked a question. What is happening with the U.S. dollar? They're selling off. And why are you doing this? And, and so on. Okay. So he starts answering the question. He gets into all the details. And what I, you know, basically stopped it right here. I believe it is absolutely clear that this is damaging the dollar as the world's reserve currency and undermining the trust in it. This is what it is all about. And he's talking about the sanctions that are imposed and how that affects Russia. He specifically said, look, we're not going to do away with the dollar. 
but at the same time, in the same sentence, talks about how they're actually doing away with the dollar. Look, they're not going to get rid of it completely. They're probably not going to go down to zero. I don't think that's realistic, but they're diversifying. He's talking about the yuan in here. He's talking about even how much stronger the ruble has become and essentially suggesting that, look, the euro to some degree is becoming a reserve currency for many countries as well. Maybe it's not the official monopoly reserve currency, but that's not how it works, okay? You can actually do business in these other currencies if you do, you know, as a country you want to. It's just a matter of setting up a different uh, swap, setting up the different uh, deals between the countries. Ultimately, you want to use the US dollar as a reserve currency because it's very stable. So you can do that. But a country with a weaker currency doesn't want to because they lose a lot in the transaction, especially when the US is not involved. What's the point? That's what this is all about here. Putin really unloads on the whole situation. I, you know, I can't show you the video. I wish I could. But uh, as I said, you definitely want to look into it for yourself. If I go into this, this is a high level banking individual quotes. From him, what he's talking about here is exactly what Russia is doing now at the time and what he believes, okay? So it's a high-level individual. I think we should take note of it. Look, the latest sanctions, which have already been touched upon by our leading enterprises such as Russo, Renova, undoubtedly shows us that we need to be more cautious. I think that the central bank reacts to this too because the central bank, the bank is often criticized for keeping money abroad. I think that is partly correct. Everyone does it, but of course it's necessary to somehow minimize the risk, reduce these risks, because today the U.S. represents the largest threat from the point of view of imposing sanctions of any kind is greater than the, and then it cuts off there. This is a translated article. I think that this too, probably the central bank and the ministry of finance take into account in this policy. Essentially what he's talking about here is the de-dollarization that is taking place, going away from the US dollar, and essentially what I pointed out previously, they want to do business with other countries and don't want to use the dollar. They are being screwed over because of all the sanctions. So why would they? Why would they want to go through their payment systems? Why would they want to go through all of their uh, special you know, uh, systems that they set up when they can go around it. And that is ultimately what they're trying to do now. And it's not going to happen overnight, definitely. But Russia is at the forefront today in trying to uh, establish deals with all other countries. And they are doing a very good job of it, considering the fact that a couple decades ago, the you know, this country was destroyed practically. And today, things have really changed. So it's come a long way in, in uh, I would say, a relatively short period of time. And they are growing and becoming more powerful. That is a very big concern for the US, clearly. But I think that countries would benefit from everybody doing well. Why does one country have to lose for another to gain? I think that's really a terrible, terrible way to do business. There can be a win-win and we don't have to listen to the military industrial complex. It's really not fair to anybody and the people who are actually affected by all of this. Look at what happens when you devalue a currency. Everybody loses except those who get the bailouts, except those who get the quantitative easing. I'm sick and tired of it personally, but that's just me. A lot of people love it because they can see that, you know, this is uh, wonderful and uh, I just believe whatever I'm told, but I'm not sticking my head in the sand. My head, ha my head has never been in the sand. I don't even know how to do that. And quite frankly, I feel like I'm one of the minority when you talk to the people around. I just feel like most people, they just quite frankly want to be duped. They want to be um, really, they love to be gullible. Uh, I'll end it there. If you found the video informative, please give me a thumbs up. When you give me a thumbs up, it helps to support the channel. I do appreciate that very much. And if you want the financial education that was not taught to you in school, well, these two books have it all. If you read these two books, I assure you, you're going to have the foundation, the history, and everything that you need to manage your own money, or you can go to your financial advisor, you can ask them the right questions. You will have the knowledge and experience that is so important this day and age more now than ever.
If you're more interested in the audiobook version, you can get that at themoneygps.com.